most of the patient using rapid maxillary expansion and facial mask with McNamara system or with a different type of system. Maybe the most effective is in the primary and early mixed dentition. Uh, the great forward movement of the maxillary when we are combined with the facial mask with, uh, and rapid maxillary expansion. Okay, we are using five or six uh, hundred grams per side about 12 hours a day, normally at most during one year. And according with Peter Nagan, the maxillary effect and the, the dental and the skeletical effect is about 60%. And mandibular, skeletical and dental effect is about 40%. For this reason, in my office, all the patients with class 3 malocclusion use it rapid maxillary expansion and facial mask. Even in patients with mandibular problems. Why? Because according with Peter Nagan, the effect of the rapid maxillary expansion and the facial mask in the mandible, in the total treatment of the, of the patient is close to 40%. Remember this case, in the lower you can see another patient with a very severe class 3 rapid maxillary expansion, facial mask, and digital treatment. What is the objective, the protocol in my office? Very simple. Between 8 and 10 years, rapid maxillary expansion and facial mask, about one year, one year and a half. One year is enough. Okay, four, three or four years later, I, I don't like to use retention. I don't like to use appliances between the first and the second phase. Three or four years later, we evaluate the phase and the occlusion. When the phase and the occlusion is okay, we decide to treat the patient with conventional orthodontic. When the face is not very good, but the occlusion is okay, uh, we, I recommend to the patient, to the patient, to the parents, to take a decision about the surgery or not, or camouflage. And when the face and the occlusion is not very good or bad, I prefer orthodontic surgery. For the reason, this is the typical patient with class uh, three, treated the patient with, um, with rapid maxillary expansion and facial mask. Now, three years later, it's time to put brackets in the upper and the lower, even to finishing the patient with a class two elastics. And the end of the treatment with a very good occlusion, a nice occlusion and very good relationship between the maxillary and the mandible. Okay, in the, in, when the patient presents a problem at the level of the face, uh, depends of the, the quality of the life of the patient, the quality of the life of the patient. Okay, and when the patient needs orthognatic surgery, I recommend to the patient orthognatic surgery. In general, I hate to camouflage the malocclusion, when the malocclusion produce a very anesthetic face. For example, this girl. The main problem of this girl is not the occlusion. The main problem of this girl is the face. For this reason, we recommend in this patient surgery to produce a mandibular setback and at the, late, the same time to produce an mentoplastia, to produce the mentoplastia and the mandibular setback, and you can see the effect, the spectacular effect, the profile of the patient of the our treatment. Another patient with an open bite, an open bite, is possible to treat this open bite with screws without surgery? Yes, it's possible, but the problem is the face of the patient is not the occlusion. The face of the patient, when you treat this patient with orthodontic surgeries, 
completely def different when the, the, the face of the patient before the surgery. You can see the change of face patient with the surgery was something spectacular. Another patient with a class three, is possible to treat this patient with extraction of the lower premolars? Maybe. We decide with the nemotech, with the nemotech to analyze this, the end of the occlusion of the patient, and the most important is the face of the patient. For the reason, the, the, the class three is the same if you are in the Roth technique, is the same if you are in the Damon technique, it's the same if you are in the MBT technique, it's the same you are in a classical tweet technique, it's the same if you are in the bioprogressive technique. It's very, very, very simple. What is the big problem in orthodontic? The big problem in orthodontic is the mandibular class two. And we have a lot of treatment mistakes. Why? because the different schools of orthodontic, the different schools of orthodontic don't use functional appliance. And this is a huge problem because without functional appliance, it's not impossible, but this is very, very, very difficult, very, very difficult to treat the mandibular class two with success, okay? Remember that in the classical evolution of the orthodontic, are we adapting the appliance to the malocclusion or the malocclusion treatment to our appliance? In my opinion, the worst problem in the history of orthodontic is the different techniques adapting the appliances, the headgear, to the malocclusion. For example, headgear is very, I like very much the headgear, okay. But Headgear was very popular. All the class two treatment is with the headgear. All the class two is a maxillary problem. But even, for example, MBT, uh, 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 excellent, uh, excellent orthodontist, uh, Dr. Trevisi, Professor Trevisi, recommend to use functional appliance, for example, the twin block. What is the problem? In, I don't know what is the situation in Jordan, but in Spain, in Latin America, in the past was very popular to use functional appliance very early, maybe between the eight, eight and 10 years old, and finishing the treatment with fixes appliance about 12, 13 years old, and the complete treatment is four or five years. And this is a huge, huge problem. For this reason, <clears throat> what is the problem? The main problem is this. If you use functional appliance to stimulate the growth of the mandible, the theoretical stimulate the growth of the mandible, okay, if you put the, the appliance very early, Okay, very early, with, this is a huge problem. And this is the, because this is the puberal growth spurt of the mandible. The puberal growth spurt of the mandible is very late. And we are talking in boys about 13, 14, and even 15 years old. And in girls, about 12. For this reason, it's not a very good idea to put very early functional appliance to move forward the money. The second problem is this. This is a very popular treatment in my office. This is a class dental class two, dental class two, and very popular in my office to put brackets in the upper, to put brackets in the lower. And now when we are using thick super elastic, uh, thick uh, stainless steel wires, we are using the class two elastics. And with the class two elastic, uh, get a very nice class one, good uh, correction of the divide. Okay, nice. What is the big problem? 
the big problem is that 90%, 90% almost, of the clinics in the world use the class two elastics only, only to correct, to correct the mandibular class two. Because in the mandibular class two is possible to correct to need to digitalize the upper molar. But the most important in the class two is to move forward the mandible, not the teeth, the mandible to move forward the mandible. Okay, the, I would like to show to, to explain our idea about class two with this case. This is a patient with a class two division one. The main problem of the patient is the retrusion of the mandible, presented functional shift of the mandible to the left, a cross bite here. Okay, okay. <coughs> okay. And I treated by my hands, I treated this patient, I start with a conventional treatment with stainless steel, uh, 90 by 25, 21 by 25, and put elastic class two with corp of SP in the upper, more class two elastic with um, with a, a stripping, more a stripping, more class two, more a stripping and control of the friction. We are using this type of bracket. This is the scenery bracket from Rocky Mountain Authority Company. And the big advantages of the synergy bracket is the possibility to control the friction and the orthodontic tooth movement tooth by tooth. For example, in this case, we need the maximum control of the, of the canine, the upper right canine, and I ligate the scenery bracket in a figure of X. Eight uh, in a figure of eight. Uh, in the this is a conventional, and if you need in the, in the synergy low low friction ligate the synergy only in the central widths. Okay, you can see the result. A very sh fast treatment, very nice result, very nice smile. The patient, the parents is very happy. But please check the complete disaster of the profile. Was a complete disaster. Okay, okay, this is a complete disaster of the profile. What was the problem? The problem was the attempt, the attempt of the correction of a skeletical class two only moving teeth. And this is a typical problem. Intrusion of the upper incisor on, with the with the stainless steel uh, corp of SP. Protrusion of the lower incisor. If you produce protrusion of the lower incisor, and remember in many techniques like the miraculous uh, brackets, uh, passive self-ligating miraculous brackets, do you understand what is the technique we are using, you can see in a lot of patients, the lower incisor at the end of the treatment present a very protrusion of the lower incisor. Why? Because in this technique, you use a very bad control of the friction. It's a very nice uh, technique to align the teeth, only for align the teeth, but in the most difficult phase of the treatment is finishing the, the, the treatment with uh, the control of the torque. And for the reason, it, 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 at the end of the treatment, you put a, a, a class two elastics and produce protrusion of the incisor. Please remember this disaster. And what was the problem? According with Samir Bisara, when the mandibular growth is tending to grow the mandible anteriorly, the occlusion produce is providing a force system to perpetuate the class two. Why? Because the mandibular the mandible 
push the maxillary forward and the mandibular forward, the maxillary forward, excuse me, the maxillary push in a reverse effect in the class two elastics and produce a posterior rotation of the mandibular. This is a complete disaster when the patient is a dolicocephalo patient. For the reason, Houston, we have a problem because most of the cases for the reason people, uh, the rough uh, guys and the rough orthodontists say uh, mandibular class 2 need orthodontic surgery according with uh, profit it's not possible to use functional appliance because the functional appliance only produce dental alveolar effect okay <clears throat> mandibular class 2 we have a problem what is that the, uh, the the first step i don't have a lot of time to explain this because we need for the mandibular a complete change of mentality the first step is not true the classification of maxillary class 2 mandibular class 2 mixed class 2 is not true the maxillary class 2 always always is a dental alveolar problem the mandibular class 2 always is a basal bone problem okay and it's completely different we need a new classification why because the dental classification is very simple class 2 molar canine overjet overbite interincisal angle but the facial class 2 is very difficult because it's a subjective is in relationship with fashion. I don't like the classification, the academic classification, maxillary mandible mix, and I don't like, okay? I prefer to use uh, maxillary dental alveolar problem, and we need to treat the anterior guy and the dental alveolar rotation and distalization of the first, first molars. The next is the mandible, and the vertical okay there is completely different a mandibular and cl a sagittal class 2 uh, problem than the vertical class 2 problem i like very much this classification this classification is in relationship with the syndrome syndrome what is a syndrome is a set of a medical scenes and symptoms uh, are correlated with each other and often with a particular disease of the cell. For the reason it's possible to, to have, it's possible to have, a moment, a light class two or a severe class two. What is a light class two? It's a class two only with a molar problem. Next, molar problem, an anterior guy problem. Next, maxillary problem. Next, muscular problem. Next, mandibular and body ramus problems. Next, chin problem. Chin problem is a huge problem. Why? Because chin is 100 genetic. 100 genetic. If the patient presents a retrognatic chin and the is the morphology of the chin, the patient needs orthognatic surgery, even if the patient uh, is six years old. Uh, TMG problems and or craniofacial uh, or syndrome problems. For this reason, the molar class two, very important, adjust the molar, to know very well the, the role of the first molar in the in the in the patient, to know the Andrews uh, keys, to know the uh, the ideal occlusion of according with uh, with Andrews the rotation, very important the rotation of the first molars, the cephalometric analysis of the patient, for example in class in the in the maxillary problems, I recommend always to start treatment with maxillary expansion. Why? Because we need unlock, unlock of 
the malocclusion. We need to unlock of the 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 uh, we need to unlock the mandible and to move forward the mandible. And for this reason, the first step is to put uh, quagelis or to something to produce expansion. And next, the use of uh, a utility arch to control the anterior guy. Okay. I like very much very simple treatment. Headgear is not a very popular treatment in our office because the patient and the parents hate the headgear. But headgear is very, very good treatment in the maxillary class two treatment. Why? Because it's very cheap. It's very cheap, producing expansion effect produce a distalization effect, produce this rotation effect, produce an increase of the vertical effect, and this produce a lot of advantages. For this reason, I like very much. It's very important to finish in very well the cases and to engage the force molar. Okay, this is a, the, I don't use the head gear. But I think it's very important to analyze and analyze the use of the headgear, even in patient, because it's very cheap and the effect is very spectacular. Don't use very sophisticated and very expensive appliance because you can see this case. It's a, it's a class two, deep bite, collapse of the maxillary, and use only a headgear, only this is a headgear, only with the headgear and with very simple appliance is enough to treat this patient. Okay, another patient. The main problem of this patient is this. The main problem of this patient is the class two. First step, distalize the force molar. Second step, to close the space, the premolar and canine. What is the problem of this type of patients? We need a sliding mechanism. To a sliding mechanism, the best bracket is a passive self-ligating bracket. And the worst bracket is the conventional bracket. For this reason, I like very much the scenery because with the scenery, if you need in the upper incisor, the control of the torque is possible to ligate in this way, but if you need in this moment to move backward the canine, the premolars, ligate only in the center. You ligate only in the center, the canine and the premolars, and the friction is close to zero. It's close to zero. Another patient, very simple treatment, maxillary dental class two, very simple. Okay, what is the problem of this patient? The shift of the upper midline to the left. For the reason, what is the problem of the shift of the upper midline? Very simple, the problem is this. What is the treatment? The treatment is to put brackets in all white in the, into the mouth to put brackets very fast, a coil spring. Now, the first step is to put the force upper molar in the correct position. In this case, we are using, we are using the, we are using the upper uh, the, uh, the pendulum appliance to distalize this molar the end of the treatment, the end of the treatment, and you can see the, co the ideal correct position of the second upper premolar, of the second. More cases, class two, division one, dental class two, dental class two, not mandibular problem, dental problem. The ideal treatment for the dental problem of the class two is the class two intermaxillary elastics. In the technique 
we combine in the anterior in incisor ligate in the figure of eight and to, to cross, to increase the torque, to control the torque during the retraction of the upper incisors and the in canines, in canines and premolars ligate in the center to get a very good sliding of the wire and move the wire to the back. Okay, very important in this patient with dental class two. Please check the rotation of the molar, check the position of the second premolars, and check the uprightening, okay, uprightening of the lower premolars and the The same here, a patient with a rotation of the upper molar, rotation of the upper molar, Okay, we need to distalize the premolar. We need to distalize the premolar. Okay, using a pendulum appliance. We use the pendulum appliance to court the first step is to correct the first upper molar. Now we are using intermaxillary elastic to engage the occlusion. Okay, very simple, very important now. To move K9 and premolars to backward, we are using the finishing the treatment. And the most important is this. You can see before the treatment, the upper midline shift to the right with the crowding, with a narrow maxillary. And now you can see the face at the end of the treatment with a very nice smile, with a very broad uh, arch. Uh, Next, the same, quite it simple, eh? simple, because in this patient, what is the problem? The, la the problem is this, the problem is the canine, but we need to move backward the, the molar. The first step is a palatal bar to the control of the first upper molars. Next step, remove this more temporary molar, put a coil spring, a night tie coil spring to distalize the, the lateral the premolar to produce a forward movement of the lateral incisor and to correct the cross bite of this tooth. Now it's time to put class two elastic because the patient present a dental problem. Okay, shift to the, to the, the class two elastics and finishing the treatment. The same, the big advantages is this, the shift to the man, the, the upper midline to the right. Now we have a very nice upper midline without extractions and with a very nice control of the premolars and the canine. Another patient with a crossbite, okay, the crossbite in the right, and we need now we need now to the crossbite, we put the elastic in the upper and in the lower. We use the quahelis to expand this molar and to control the expansion with this type of uh, uh, bypass arch wire and the end of the treatment. And you can see the nice smile of the patient, okay, because the patient presents a class two, dental class two. Even in patient with different, with a collapse of the maxillary, with a problem in the maxillary, is we are using rapid maxillary expansion and a very good control after this rapid maxillary expansion, a very good control, a very good negative control of the molars and the premolars. Okay, remember this, the occlusion of the patient, and remember the, the anglius, andrius keys, the incisal angle, the, the, uh, uh, the inclination of the second order burns, the Monson and Wilson curve, and I like very much, for example, for the diagnosis of the class two, this diagram. This is a patient, okay, and this is the distance between the first molar and the pterygoidea 
vertical line. This distance is the age of the patient more three millimeters. And this is the distance between the molar and the lateral incisor is about 25 millimeters. When the patient present a rotation and initialization of the first molar, okay, increase the age and three millimeters, increase this distance and decrease this distance. What is the plan of treatment? The first step is to put the molar uh, backward to control the molar. For this reason, I like very much this diagram. For example, in the number one, the patient present class two in the right and class one in the left, okay? And this is the, according with this, only the problem is in the right, not in the left, only the problem is in the class K9, class two in the right, not in the left. Over jet is normal, IMB is normal. The distance between the molar and the vertical line is increased only in the right side. For this reason, what is the treatment? Very, very simple. The treatment is only the treatment of one molar. You need to correct the, mo the first upper molar, correct first the molar, second the premolar, and, second, and third the canine. But in the third case, class two in the right and in the left, class two in the canine are right and left, but the distance between the molar and the lateral incisor, the distance is completely normal. And the distance between the molar and the pericoidea line is also normal. For this reason, what is the problem of this patient with overjet increase? Class two in the right and in the left canines. The plan of treatment of this patient is to for move forward the mandible. Okay, to move forward the mandible. For example, in patient like this, with a protrusion of the maxillary, what is the treatment? The treatment is the use of the of the C modeler for Cervera to, pro, to correct the protrusion of the incisor, to correct the overjet, to, cor to control the growth of the mandible. And now is time, and now is time to finish the case. Remember this, the, the hypothesis, the Melvin Moss, the Melvin Moss hypothesis, the proprioception occlusal hypothesis for Petrovic, the connection between the mesencephalic nucleus and the change of the dynamic of the mandible, the relationship with the functional appliance and the appliance that is possible with this appliance to stimulate the growth of the mandible, okay? And you can see here that in many cases it's possible to change the face of the patient with the rapid maxillary expansion. I like to, to use the rapid maxillary expansion in these patients, okay, to change the, to change the upper airways, like in this patient with a maxillary collapse, we are using uh, the rapid maxillary expansion and expansion very fast, the maxillary. And in my, in my office, it's very important the diagnosis of the patient. Remember also this. Remember the tongue, the role of the muscle, okay, of the patient. Remember this, that this is very, very important and to understand how to work the functional, the functional appliances, okay? How to work the functional appliances. For this reason, uh, what is the philosophy of the treatment? The genetic? Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes. we have five minutes. Okay. Do you know something? Sorry? Yes. Five minutes we have. Okay. One moment, one moment. 
And what is the, the for example, the treatment in our office? What is the, one moment, <laughs> the classical uh, treatment is this. One moment, well, okay. Okay, the idea is very simple, is this. We treat to, uh, with the functional appliance, stimulate the growth of the mandible, but at the same time, stimulate the alveolar bone apical, apical, okay, to the teeth. Okay, this is the idea, to stimulate the alveolar bone here and here, and to stimulate, to stimulate the growth of the mandible. But remember, that is not true. It's not possible to stimulate the growth of the mandible, of the basal bone of the mandible, or only to stimulate the, the mandibular with the, con the condyle. Uh, for this reason, in a patient, the treatment is the, to correct of the molar, second, to correct the divide, third, is to put functional appliance, okay? And this is the, for example, a patient put, we use the first step is to align the teeth, align, to increase the overjet, increase the overjet, to create the space to move forward the mandible. Uh, after we are, we use, uh, we use the, the twin block, and we use the twin block, the digital or conventional twin block, at the same time that the brackets and the wires. Now is a new periodontal proprioception, stimulate the new periodontal proprioception, and now the patient present the jumping divide. This is a concept from angle, from angle. Jumping divide, the patient jumping divide, now is in a, in not in a true, class one, is it like a false class one? But in this moment is the moment that we are using a, a lot of class two elastic, short and heavy. And with the use of this class two short and heavy elastic, finishing the treatment. And this is the retention because we start, we finish the treatment very early. We use like a retention, a functional appliance to avoid the relapse. This is the patient years later and the patient years, years later, and more years later. Another patient, divide, collapse of the, of the mandible, retrusion of the mandible, if you analyze the nasolabial angle is a mandibular class two. Okay, this is the, the uh, our analysis or forecast for the treatment. The objective of this patient is the first step is to produce a protrusion of the upper incisors because we need to move forward the mandible to avoid the disaster of the patient that we show it. Uh, at the start of the lecture. Okay, the idea is this. Okay, now we have to put, to produce, to, uh, to okay, to analyze the cephalometric analysis, maxillary expansion, control of the incisor guide, mandibular unlock, first jumping bite, second, the use of functional appliance, second jumping bite, and finishing with uh, uh, the technique of alignment, leveling, closing the space, and finishing with a straight wire, low friction with a synergy bracket. We use for this maxillary expansion equagelis, for the incisal guy uh, bypass arch wires, for the functional appliances of Frenkel, Bimler, or another type of Frenkel. We use the combination between the twin block, uh, the, excuse me, twin block, the bionature. Uh, with um, first equagelis, second the bionature with brackets and wires. And you can see here, finishing the treatment very fast. Okay, and you can see the face of the patient. It's completely different, this type of patient. We produce the first step was 
the protrusion of the upper incisor. The second point was the use of functional appliance to stimulate the growth of the dental alveolar growth of the mandibular bone apical to the teeth. The, this is the patient, and you can see the patient three years after the treatment with a very stable occlusion, with a very nice occlusion, with a very um, with a very good uh, engage and very good dynamic occlusion. Uh, this is not a 100% uh, of a stability, okay? Because in many cases, it's not possible to stimulate the growth of the alveolar bone or the, or the, or the mandible, but in our hands, the best result to treat patient with mandibular class two is the combination between the use of functional appliance and the fixes appliance, the ideal in the future is the digital functional appliance. This is the ideal for the future. Okay. Okay, I have more, more cases, but I prefer if you want uh, uh, questions, okay. Okay. Um... We have like one question, and I'm going to ask you the first question if you don't mind. Now, regarding the clear aligners, um, which age do you prefer to start in for children? And does this kind of manufacture, do you manufacture it in Europe? No, 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 no I don't manufacture it. It's manufactured in a, in a company in Spain, in Malaga, in the city of Malaga. The name is uh, Alinea Dent. I don't have experience. Uh, of uh, to make to manufacture the aligners at home okay because the main problem with the aligners at home is the price of the of the resin okay it's not very easy to to organize the the the, the aligners at home maybe in the future with the depend of the price of the of the printing uh, the idea is if you are using for example a linear end, uh, excuse me invisalign you have Invisalign kits. The idea of Invisalign kits is to put uh, all the treatment of the patient using only aligners. My idea is, is different. The idea is to, for, to put uh, in the first phase of the treatment uh, something very simple, to four brackets, one quahelis, one uh, lingual arts, and using only, only the aligners in the last phase or in the last part of the mixed dentition immediately uh, uh, immediately uh, before the um, the loose of the exfoliation of the second uh, the second um, temporary molars and before the eruption of the upper canine okay let's go for the second question it's uh, dr riyad uh, let's unmute. Uh, uh, yes, I will do it. Just a minute. Doctor Riyad, تفضل لو سمحت. Thank you for for your lectures. Okay, thank you. Uh, first part is that your lecture is a, the title of it is to, to use a liner in children's in mixed dentition, right? Only yes yes so we have a problem with adults with the cooperation to use a liner yeah when you when you give a liner to children's usually you have a problem that they, they will not eat it so instead of this we can use as you said any type of fixed appliances and get get the, the result so there is no need to, to use a liner in mixed dentition, and in, because the cooperation of the children is very difficult. Yes. The, yeah. The question is very simple. If you put aligners in children, the first uh, you put aligners with the idea to put the all the treatment with the with the aligner. The big problem is this is very unstable the aligner, and the peop, and the and the kid remove the aligner. But we are talking about to put the aligner only during a very short period, maybe six months, one year 
even less because it's the between the uh, the, the loose of the second temporary molars and the eruption of the upper canines. It's a very short period. In this short period, it's possible to get a very good uh, retention of the liner. Even uh, and, and my, my experience with the liner in kids only in this period is very good. I okay. think that we can finish the case with fixed appliances and that's it. No, no, there's no need for liners with the kids. The kids they are uncooperative to, to, to use a liner. Yeah, we have this, this is a problem. The second part that cover everything. You cover class two, class three, functional appliances, head gears. Nowadays, 90% of orthodontics, they don't use head gears. They use the implants, distalization. I'm yes. with you. functional appliances with you. I'm also with you to use a face mask in young children's Robert Max expansion. But in the same times, you cover everything. This is, Yanni, I don't think that uh, what you are dealing with is that what type do we have uh, this lecture? Is it lectures for early treatment or is it lectures for everything? I am sorry to say that. No, the question is, is very simple. The question is, the first step is I use a lot of mini screws. In, in fact, I have mini screws and I use a lot of mini screws. The lecture is is two parts. The first part is about the mixed dentition, and the second part is the use is that the class two treatment in, in in the class two treatment. In my office, we treat the patient of class two with functional appliance and fixes appliance at the same time. Another question is the cooperation. Okay, in my office, uh, in my office, I have. I use a lot of functional appliance and I don't have problems with the functional appliance. A lot of people uh, uh, talk about, I have a lot of problems with the kids because the kids don't use the appliances. It's not possible to put removable appliances in the kids or it's not in my, in my, in my office. I have a good, uh, because the main problem in orthodontic today is how to move the mandible forward without functional yeah. appliances. Not with, uh, with uh, for, because forthus or another type of appliances like forthus they produce a dental alveolar protrusion of the lower incisor. This is the, the this is the, okay. the, the question. Dr. Shadi, Fadl, Dr. Shadi, this and so on. Dr. Shadi has a question. Shukran. Yes, thank you, thank you, Dr. Majd, uh, thank you. and thank you, Dr. David, for the uh, informative presentation as always. Um, actually, there was a question in the Q&A tab, but I think it was this similar to Dr. Riyadh's uh, question, so we'll consider this answered. But I do have a question of my own, if you don't mind. And it's also regarding the uh, treatment of uh, uh, kids in the mixed dentition with the aligners. So y you mentioned uh, that you actually reproduce the, um, the shape or the size of the unerupted teeth. Uh, during the mixed dentition as you're treating with aligners. So um, can you just give us a, a brief, quick note about how uh, you actually um, reproduce accurately the actual yeah, yeah. And size? And, and do you actually have to take uh, uh, re-scans or new impressions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the question is very simple. The question is, uh, it, there is two possibilities. The first possibility is more sophisticated and you can see here with the uh, and the, the first question is if you is the ideal the ideal is um, the ideal is to use a CBCT okay and you take the foot the to, you take the, the 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 shape of the teeth another another very simple is to to take the the opposite tooth or to use a tooth very similar in the shape in a bank of tooth and to put in a bank of tooth and two more or less to put the more or less in the space for this tooth. Okay, it's possible. Mm -hmm. The ideal is with the CVCT, but it's not necessary. It's possible nice. to put with a bank. Uh, for example, imagine that you, you have the, the eruption of the force premolar in the upper. It is possible to use the force premolar to create the shape of the canine. Yes. Okay, but it, is, is this really accurate towards the later stages of the treatment when you want to fine tune the position of the tooth? 
Uh, yeah, it have more or less, more or because you need more space. If the canine, the measurement of the canine is eight millimeters, you need to put more or less ten or more. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. David Suarez, for your beautiful lecture uh, tonight. Thank you. It was our real pleasure having you twice this month. Oh, hopefully, <laughs> we will meet you soon. Okay. Have a nice uh, evening and. Uh, uh, my dear colleagues, thank you very much for attending tonight. Uh, happy Ramadan, full Ramadan, khair, Ramadan Kareem. Inshallah, we'll see you in the near future. Dr. Thank you. Thank you very much and happy Ramadan. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. We'll be ending the meeting now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, we are live Bardo on Facebook. معنا دكتور عبد الله حلحولي، دكتور أكرم الطواشي، دكتورة إلهام عبد العزيز، دكتورة لبنى أبو الرب، دكتور محمد مهداد، دكتور محمد النذير، دكتور محمد خليفات، معتصم العبد الله، مع حب الألقاب، دكتورة منى جبرين. دكتورة نانسي السرايرة أهلا وسهلا دكتور نضال غنام اس اي عمري ما بعرف مين اس اي عمري دكتور سامر صناع دكتورة سليم بدران دكتور شادي الحوراني دكتورة سجود فايز دكتورة زهاء عمرين أهلا وسهلا نرحب ب نبدا ان شاء الله هلا بالمحاضرتنا لهذا اليوم نرحب بالدكتور عبير الحديدي الدكتور عبير الحديدي is an assistant professor at the department of oral surgery and oral medicine pathology and periodontology at the school of dentistry university of jordan دكتور الحديدي received her dds degree 2004 من الجامعه الاردنيه and certificate and MS degrees in oral and maxillofacial radiology from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill B. She got her PhD in 2014 from King's College, University of London, completed fellowship and oral and maxillofacial radiology at the University of UNC. The University of North Carolina. And she's currently the adjunct assistant professor there. In 2011, Dr. Hadidi became a diplomat of the American Board of Oral and Maxillofacial Radiology. She's also got her Jordanian board certificate, the same specialty. Her research was always focused on the use of 3D data and 3D image analysis in treatment planning of corrective surgical procedures. A PhD was done on the use of 3D image analysis in the diagnosis and treatment planning of mandibular asymmetry. نرحب الدكتورة عبير الحديدي أهلا وسهلا فيك مرة ثانية بجمعية تقويم الأسنان. يا مسا الورد يا مسا الورد آه الله يعطيكم ألف ألف عافية آه وبتمنى إنه أنتم وعائلاتكم بأحسن حال وأفضل صحة يا رب وإن شاء الله يا رب بشدة وبتزول وبنشوف بعض إن آه بيرسون قريبا بإذن الله. Is it possible today? I'm going to go through CBT application in orthodontics. In the beginning, we're going to talk a little bit about the basics of the technology. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the technicalities and the biological aspects of CBT that would lend it suitable for dentistry in general and orthodontics in particular. And then we're going to dive into the position paper of the use of CBT in orthodontics. Oh, I'm going to share some cases with you guys so we can open the conversation about and maybe uh, relevance of the use of this technology in the orthodontic practice. So, as you know, the CBCT 
NFT is a technology that is based on a wide cone beam rather than a shallower uh, flat fan beam. It uses an X-ray source. It's a much cheaper, more prevalent, and uh, gives a less dose of radiation uh, in, as opposed to multi-detector conventional CT scan. And that makes it really significant for dentoabular applications. The field of view of CBCT is very flexible as well. And this is very important. You could actually capture as big as a large field of view, which would have the whole craniofacial area in the field. Or you may go with a maxillofacial field of view, which is smaller, that contains the maxilla mandible. Sometimes this has the TMJ included, sometimes not. Or sometimes you may opt into a much smaller field of view where you capture few teeth, thinnen talate, and most people that use that uh, would be looking into an endodontic application. So uh, high flexibility is very important, especially in orthodontics. Because as you can see, we may look into a large field of view, medium field of view, or a small field of view. In orthodontics, we're looking into a large and medium field of view being in the major focus. There are some technical differences between conventional multi-detector CT and a comb beam CT that would be relevant in the use of CVCT in the dental alveolar area. The multi-detector CT would use a, a fan beam, which means it would take a slice per slice individually. On the other hand, a comb beam CT will use a much larger uh, X-ray source, meaning in time to take the whole head and neck area in one rotation. And this we'll come back to in specific, but we'll talk about the radiation biology with those aspects of, uh, of both technologies. However, Image characteristic of CBCT and CT in general could be actually looked at with طريق تين أساسية تين. الطريقة الأولانية هي contrast resolution والطريقة الثانية هي spatial resolution. The contrast resolution هي قدرة the imaging system بإنه يحدد the difference between two uh, structures, two types of tissues, بناء على الدنسيتي والثكنس تبعهم. وهذه is generally a function of signal to noise ratio. إذا بتطلعوا على هذه السلايد, the signal to noise ratio profile of a multi-detector CT is much better than the signal to noise ratio profile of CBCT, which means in a CBCT has a worse contrast resolution profile. هلا, what does that mean? That means if I'm looking into a radiographic task, an interpretation task, that would necessitate me in the Araf al two different types of tissues, and I would need that in most soft tissue imaging. Is the soft tissue mass in the tongue or soft tissue mass inside of a salivary gland, or the soft tissue capsule of a temporomandibular joint, then I'm probably not gonna use CBCT. However, one of the major, major advantages of CBCT CT the resolution uh, contrast. Resolution contrast is a feature of the imaging technology that would allow me to tell small uh, structures apart, even when they're close together. CT, I can actually see more details. Well, probably most of us in the in dental specialties would actually need the the spatial resolution rather than the contrast resolution. Because I want to know tafasil al cortices, tafasil alaqa bain al total periodontal ligament space. Is I'm bahki on the structural changes that I'm seeing, for example, around the root of a tooth right next to an impacted tooth, or structural changes be a condylar head, for example. Had all cool home radiographic tasks that would need spatial resolution, which is great because the CBCT would have the spatial resolution that we need for these tasks. Ishitani that is also of, the, of a major, major importance in choosing a radiographic technique is the radiation dose. Especially for you guys as orthodontists, and more than a sample in which your patients are on the younger side. And definitely, we're going to be even more concerned about radiation dose. Of course, the, you would use a higher radiation uh, tool 
if you need that ra extra radiation dose, if that dose will actually bring you more important answers about a question. However, if I'm comparing two radiographic modalities that will give me the exact same outcome, I'll definitely will go with the lower dose uh, modality or technology, for example. One way of looking at those is background radiation. هلا إحنا مجرد إن عايشين فوق سطح الأرض أيام ما كنا نسافر من بلد لبلد. The fact that the trap موجود فيه radioactive material, some food that we eat have some radioactive material. إحنا عم نحص radiation just by being alive. فبال publication زي ما يحكوا عن radiation dose مرات they they try to equate you know how much radiation dose does this modality have in comparison to one day of natural exposure I would say ف for a typical combined CT that involves the maxilla and the mandible that's almost equal to eight days of background radiation and in microsieverts, إذا بدنا نحكي شوي technical أكثر, in microsieverts, هدول ما بين ال 70 وال 100 microsievert. بس إذا بدنا نقارنهم ب how many uh, days أو how much radiation dose would a STT that involves the same structures اللي هم الماكسل والماندبل هاف, أنت عم تحكي عن multiple multiple folds. أنت عم تحكي على بين ال 1000 و 1500 microsievert. مقارنة بين ال 70 و 100 وانت عم تحكي عن 256 days او 170 days of background radiation مقارنة ب 8 days of background radiation depending on قديش الفيلد فيو و which machine are we talking about. So if we needed three dimensional imaging then comb beam is probably where we need to go. If we do not need three dimensional imaging then a panoramic or maybe plus minus a cephalometric will be the way to go. And sometimes we may not need imaging for an answer of a clinical task. And for example, a digital panoramic, ma bein yani lo tnash wal khamstashar microsievert, and that's that's equal to 1.7 days of background radiation. Fahiya hek to get a feeling of yani how much radiation dose am I thinking of giving my patient? Applications of comb beams are the application of any radiation, uh, of any radiology technology that is out there. So implants here, yeah, driving force, but you, know, you use it to any developmental anomaly, impacted teeth, including the third molars as well, periapical endodontic applications, temporomandibular joints, uh, trauma patients, all types of pathological findings, and definitely orthodontics and airway space uh, is uh, one very important clinical use uh, for comb beam CT imaging in the dental practice. Um, there's a very important uh, paper that I usually go by uh, that looked into the clinical recommendations regarding the use of comb beam tomography and orthodontic treatment. And that's a position paper that was uh, written by the American Academy of Oral Maxillofacial Radiology. Half the authors who may radiology Radiologists, who half the authors from the orthodontists as well. Uh, so there was contribution in the American Academy of Orthodontics in that regard. So they looked at uh, the use of uh, CBCT in all phases of treatment and in uh, multiple scenarios as well. فبل أول زي يعني try to emphasize that زي هزي أي imaging modality تانية the decision to perform that examination needs to be based on the patient's history with clinical examination إذا المريض عنده previous radiographic imaging هل في clinical condition معين where you really need extra imaging to be done um, and also you need to always uh, outweigh the potential risk of exposure to radiation always always if you can get your, your answers quest, uh, or your questions answered by a lower dose conventional imaging, go for it. If you take a panoramic and the panoramic would suffice, then there is no need for comb beam CT. This is كمان هذه بنحكي فيها أكثر لقدام موضوع virtual orthodontic study models. بس لسه عم بيقول if you can actually perform the task without even uh, ionizing radiation, then أحسن وأحسن. So if you can actually solve your problem, obtain the data without giving your patient radiation, how do we call the ideal situation? تمام؟ هلا when you decide to use a comb beam, بالذات بالأورثو لأنه we're always dealing with younger people, you kind of have to look into the details and try to minimize the radiation dose, whether you want to optimize the field of view, uh, بلكي minimize the exposure one way or another, uh, and all that. هلا بالنسبة يعني 
في كثير اشياء ذات يو كان كنترول اف يو ورك ان هوسبيتال بيز ويل كوم بيم جنبك هاو ايفر اف يو ار ا دنتست ذات از ريفيرينج اوت احسن طريقه تو اكشلي جفرن هدول الديتيلز هو ذا تشويس اوف ذا بروبر فيلد اوف فيو لانه مش كل مره مريضك لازم ينبعث عشان يتصور كوم بيم يو هاف تو انكلود كل الماكسيلا والمانديبل او كل الهيد انك اريا سو يو بروبلي وان بي مور سبيسيفيك اباوت وات كويستشن ار يو تراين تو انسر و تراي تو ليميت ذات فيلد اوف فيو لهذيك المنطقة that you're interested in. هلا of course do not take a comb beam just عشان بدك تريح حالك and to get a lateral self or a panoramic out of them. وبنفس الطريقة if you really think your patient would need a comb beam وبدك تاخد medium field of view comb beam ما في داعي تاخد panoramic و cephalometric to start with. يعني إذا أنا مريضي already مثلا craniofacial deformity أو cleft lip and palate patient. I would probably skip the panoramic part and send my patient to get CBCT done or then get my uh, two-dimensional imaging reformatted from that existing combi. Hello. Hello. معظم science will evidence the literature on the importance will as we call it the benefit from the combi in the orthodontic patients. The impacted teeth. لانه اللوكيشن اورينتيشن اوف ذوس امباكتد تيث ذا مورفولوجي اوف ذيم ريليشن تو فايتال ستراكشرز باث اوف انسرشن والبريزنس اور ابسنس اوف روت ريزوربشن اوف اجيسنت تيث انا تعلمت من زملائي الاورثودونتست انهم بيلعبوا ا ميجر ميجر رول ان ذا تريتمنت بلاننج البروجنوسس ويذر ام جونا تراي تو برينج ات ان ذا ارش اور ميبي تيك ات اوت سيرجيكلي اور maybe just leave it in place and not do anything about it. فهدول ال 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 points اللي عم نحكي عنهم are very important to tackle and هم very important in the treatment plan in the overall prognosis of the patients as well. فمعظم كيسات ال impaction I would say من ال literature ومن ال clinical practice ومن اللي علموني يا زملاء ال orthodontists would actually benefit from a community. So whether I'm dealing with complicated cases, multiple supernumeraries, all of them are impacted, such as this uh, example of cleidocranial uh, dysplasia patient, where we have multiple supernumeraries, or some of them may have potentially cystic degeneration around them, or we have proximity to a canal. The clinical situations they hear, there is a lot of decision making to happen. And here, an orthodontist is going to be on board, an oral surgeon needs to be on board. Or will the radiologist? We're going to have to think about that. We're going to have to think whether we need to leave some of those teeth. If we're leaving any of, if we're taking some out. Which ones need to come out? If we're thinking of complete uh, rehabilitation, are we thinking of potential implant therapy later on in life? For كل هاي المعلومات, a combium CT will probably be able to help shed some light to uh, try to solve some of those dilemmas. هلا مرات some of those impacted or even partially impacted teeth, uh, malpositioned teeth maybe. They could appear simpler. You know, for this uh, young lady, it can be and have a buckly placed uh, canine. Yeah, it it does not sound seems to be of a big clinical problem. Well, I can طلبوا لها كم بيم for her impacted wisdom teeth. حلو. وبصراحة أنا ما كنت كتير متحمس حتى شفت هذا المنظر. So the root of that buckly displaced canine was devoid of bone. It was all the way out. هلا أكيد كل يتنا بلشنا نصفن في الموضوع إنه هم this tooth is probably not as easy as you know any orthodontist would would say. لأنه يعني it's not gonna take only nine months if you're gonna even attempt to align it. يعني I'm worried about the vitality of this tooth. I'm worried about the buccal support. Is there gonna be any bone buccal to it? Even if I try to align it, and if I try to align it, would it even stay in place, or would it start being mobile? So, يعني في كتير معلومات أعطتني إياها هذه the overall look of the comb beam that may help me change my mind. طبعاً بعد ما أكون شارح للمريض والجارديان تبعه التفاصيل لأنه يعني هذا المنظر would actually help your patient be an active member with the team of the decision making. لأنه مرات you really wanna have that conversation with cool collective um, decision. 
فاذا بتسمحوا لي ام جونا جست شو فيو كيسز اوف امباكتد تيث كيس سم اوف ذيس ار جست ريجولار امباكتد تيث اند سم اوف ذوز ار سوبر ريمري او ليت سي اف يعني ذوز كوم بيمز وير هيلبفول اور نوت سو ذيس ار ا كابل اوف سوبر ريمري تيث ذير ار سيتويتد رايت بالاتل تو بوت سنترال انسايزرز حيكون ببال الواحد مالتيبل كويستشنز اولا السيتويشن ذا امباكت How close are those teeth to the roots of the uh, central incisors? Shoe situation of the roots of the central incisors, من ناحية uh, development, من ناحية closure of the roots, من ناحية shape as well. Are any of these roots dilacerated or not? And this is a volume rendering uh, model. هذا بعطيني هيك an overall uh, look of maybe relationship uh, overall look about the morphology of teeth as well. Well, I can, and when I go over and see my comb beams, I actually use the actual data. Um, on, um, on this uh, upper right corner over here, um, I see an axial cut. And then this is correlated by a reconstructed panoramic and I can see a buccolingual perspective of those supernumerary teeth. Now I can tell, are they close to the roots of the natural teeth? I can tell if, what's the nature of the roots of those supernumeraries, and I can tell whether the roots of the natural teeth have been affected by external root resorption or something like that. And uh, so if, if you see that the upper one is looking at the upper left central and the associated supernumerary, and we can see below the same representation of the supernumerary on the right-hand side. See a couple of supernumeraries on the mandible as well, you know, with the mandible having the ID canal and the mental foramen. Also relationship to vital structure comes handy because, you know, after we decide whether these teeth are to stay or to go, we we'll probably want to look into surgical approach, whether, uh, you know, maybe uh, a different surgical technique needs to happen, whether that patient may need more than local anesthesia uh, during the, the operation. Um, so we look into these teeth. And again, this is the axial cuts, and this is correlated with the reconstructed panoramic. And I would like to... Alfit Mazarkom, la el khat al burtuqali hon, that corresponds with an axial cut up here, will khtut al khudar, al consecutive, hadol, they correspond with the specific cross sections that we see on al taraf al al yamin. Tamam? The numbers that are up here, they correspond on the numbers اللي جايين على ال arch because ال arch كمان مرقم زي كأنه مرقم مسطرة. ومعظم ال softwares will give us that sort of correlation لأنه يعني بال 3D imaging في more data than we usually see uh, or encounter on our panoramic or regular cephalometric. So we always have to keep coordinated عشان not to lose our geographic location. عشان الواحد not to get confused على أنا وين بطلع وين بكل وين بلتل. Uh, so you always want to try to correlate كل ال views مع بعض. And this is a good look of the supernumerary teeth on the left hand side. This is the uh, volume rendered from an occlusal perspective. This is giving us one side and this is looking at the other side. So proper characterization of where their teeth are and their relationship to adjacent teeth and to vital structure. This is another example of a, an impacted uh, canine. Also, uh, how much buccal bone there is uh, Bardo has been a very important uh, prognostic factor, uh, and that probably will change your dis uh, decision on the mechanics used and whether you know more bodily movement needs to happen. Also, the presence of a potential external root resorption on adjacent teeth would also be uh, on prognosis or be on mechanics as well. So, on a close-up, I'm going to intermediate, I would say, uh, external root resorption uh, that is affecting the buccal surface of the root of the lower left lateral incisor.
تمام and this is uh, the uh, volume rendered uh, appearance of uh, that uh, buccally impacted uh, canine and you, in almost transposition as well. This is another look into another supermemory and uh, associated impacted teeth. Also the relationship of those supernumerary teeth and impacted teeth to the nose are usually interesting as well uh, because that uh, yeah, I mean, it may need uh, a slight change in the surgical technique as far as accessibility to that. أخيراً وليس آخراً sometimes impacted teeth are associated with pathology يعني هم ما بيكونوا impacted because of space issues أو because of root morphology problems لا بيكونوا uh, being impeded physically impeded from actually erupting and this is a good example of an odontome uh, this is a complex odontome to me um, and that explains why uh, that uh, second molar uh, failed to erupt so Maninsa, you know, yani our patients can actually have diseases uh, that we may need to uh, be able to uh, figure out looking at a three-dimensional image. Other things that are important are craniofacial deformities, um, including cleft lip and palate and all the other sim syndromes uh, that you guys sometimes see in clinic. Um, we have a lot of uh, softwares and a lot of effort in technology that actually trying to provide more tools uh, for us to be able to, um, I would say, deduct more info from our three-dimensional image. Because, you know, looking at the comb beam is very, very useful. However, we, if we can detect more information, whether about the morphology of the head and neck areas of the patient or whether uh, something has to do with the soft tissue as well, uh, that would probably be an added benefit to our patients, especially if we go into the orthognathic surgery uh, kind of work. Uh, so there are multiple softwares that would have additional three-dimensional cephalometric uh, capabilities, uh, Dolphin 3D being one of them, and uh, it helps into you know, having all those modules that looks into the temporomandibular joint and maybe uh, an orthognathic surgery type of module. Uh, materialized uh, also has uh, those modules that go in the intersection between orthodontics and uh, surgery with all those reconstructed uh, work and, um, you know, all those syndromic patients. Uh, which actually may be useful, and that goes into the digital dentistry world with, you know, designing and printing uh, missing pieces uh, or intermediate um, tools, I would say, in the treatment plan. Virtual study model has been uh, kind of one of those interesting uh, things that we can detect out, out of a comb beam. I personally have a lot of reservations uh, in this particular uh, uh, use, I would say, uh, because of two reasons. Number one, if some people بلش ياخدوا comb beam كجزء من convenience. يعني أنت you get a comb beam بعدين بتطلع منها virtual study model, بتطلع منها panoramic, بتطلع منها comb beam. وللأسف scientifically هذا مش good enough reason. فا it has been زي ما تقولوا misused. Also, on the other hand, I have much better alternatives of getting a virtual study model, which is intraoral scanning. Hala, intraoral scanning would give me a much better quality bil study model, quality would kun ahsan, using zero radiation. So I would probably personally would rather in a uh, better quality with zero radiation. Hala, however, if my patient really needs a comb beam, or an al comb beam for a valid reason, mandi mushkile in not to try to look into this as an extra benefit. But it's not the main reason or I'm going to use it to use a virtual study model. So that's one thing to consider. Uh, a comb beam could actually be, as I said, a base so I can move on to other clinical uh, inputs, like for example, 3D photography. وهذا بيساعد بال uh, انه يعني ادخل التريتمنت بلاننج اوف السوفت تيشيو اون توب اوف ذا هارت تيشيو بون اند تيث اندرنيث فيو كان اولويز ميرج ا كومبين سي تي وذ 
3D uh, photograph, extra oral and intra oral as well. Lano, I can also take an intra oral scan and merge it with my cold beam as well. Fahada can kun useful. Those uh, third party softwares will actually be able to detect, deduct a lateral or a PA cephalometric radiographs from the cone beam uh, data set if needed, of course. And uh, if the cone beam was uh, called for in the first place, for sure. Sometimes comb beam could be useful. I know a lot of people would, would say, mini screws, Abir, not really. It's such an easy thing to do. Maybe I don't want to for young people. I totally ag agree with you. But if you're using a plate, مثلاً, if there is something interesting regarding the root morphology uh, or the يعني, shape of that arch, uh, yani something that is way out of, of, of normal. There are numerous uh, articles, bill uh, literature, I'm talking about potential use of comb beam if you're thinking about uh, extra anchorage that is derived from the bone. عشان تعرف وين تحطها و يعني ما تعمل damage to adjacent structures for sure. Airway assessment has always been interesting. يعني إذا إذا بلشنا نقرأ الليترشر قبل عشر سنين مثلاً, there was a huge drive about let's dive more and look more into the morphology of the airway, the volume of the airway, the cross section of the airway. There was a lot of effort into trying to combine that with potential uh, sleep apnea signs and symptoms, maybe with potential uh, morphological uh, facial uh, profiles وهذا uh, الحكي يعني عم بتطور يعني every now and then بتبلش في جروبس جديدة عم تشتغل عليه بصراحة الليترشر مش متفق يعني you may read a lot of pieces that would say this particular feature could be connected or you would hear a really good group nice piece of literature on the other hand that would give you contradicting uh, sign um, I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying do not take, take a comb beam just to look into your airway assessment. If you already have a comb beam for other features or you were scrolling through it and you notice that the cross section is really small in some area, then we probably want to maybe look closely and look into all the other features of the airway. Well, I can just for airway assessment, ما في لترشر كفاية يقول آخد كوم بيم بس for that sole reason هلأ بالزمنات أيام ما أنا كنت أشتغل الماجستير والكوم بيم تبعي كنا نعمل هذا الحكي باليد يعني تتسني automatic kind of a research point of view بس هلأ there are a lot of tools that can actually give you that in a much much easier chair side uh, type of uh, way ف يعني التولز كلها في متناول اليد بس we probably have to be a little bit more diligent in uh, I would say interpreting the results. This is really really interesting. وجود الكوم بيم والuse of the comb beam عم بعطينا a golden opportunity into actually understanding growth and development أكثر. وأنا عارف يعني you guys are the perfect group عشان to share my passion in growth and development. عشان ما حدا بفهم ليش أنا بكون مبسوطة وأنا عم بطلع على السن كوندروسس إلا أنتوا جماعتي جماعة الأورثة. Uh, so yeah, we could tell a lot more about our understanding of growth and development and تعلمنا كتير 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 من الكوم بيمز على الأورثوغنثيك سيرجري يعني كل الليترشر تبع الريلابس uh, والستابيليتي uh, of uh, orthognathic احنا عم يعني أخدنا من كوم بيم سيتي and I'm saying that because I was يعني honored to be part of the stability study following uh, orthognathic surgery which was a really really long uh, long term uh, process that happened at uh, the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill ورحمة الله عليه William Prophet was the head of that uh, working group ودكتور فيل